that all cell phones and electronic devices be turned off for an immune position. That's not to disturb me. And remember, the public also has the right to make an audio or video recording of those who the public meeting. Remember, the public who wishes to record a meeting must first notify the chair and must comply with reasonable requirements regarding audio or video equipment established by the chair so it's not to interfere with the meeting. The chair is required to inform other attendees of such recording at the beginning of the meeting. White the video, place the camera at my convenience. Good evening. In accordance with, our new, with, in accordance with our new rule, yes. at $10 for every minute, Mrs. Bonk, Mrs. Bonk is never late. I just have to go before the meeting, Jeff. What's that thing about getting blood out of the car? Roll call. Let me attend. Mrs. Bonk, Mrs. Bonk, Mrs. Bonk, Mrs. Bonk, Mrs. Bonk, Mrs. Bonk, Citizens participation. <coughs> uh oh. Dave? Yes. Down front, please. Down front. Yes. All I want to say is uh well we have to wait to oh, uh, please wait for Mr. White to get the uh getting ready for a town meeting, I went to a lot of different uh meetings watching uh, the presentations, and I was here a lot. And I just think that uh, uh, the four nights we just uh, went through were done quite well by this committee. And I want to personally give a compliment that as far as I'm concerned, this is the finest FinCom that we've had in this town in a long time. Handled things well, agree, disagree with each other, but all very professionally, and there were times when perhaps they weren't treated with the proper respect. And the irony of it is, when people wanted more information, these were the same people that were very critical of a previous meeting that did try to give information. So it really is rather ironic. But I want to say that I think you all did a superb job, and someone ought to pat you on the back. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Are they, yes. Are these prior year or prior contracts or are these going forward contracts? These would run through um, June 30th, 2011. So every single contract that, that we would have, including the, uh, the library and then the police are through June 30th, 2011. So now we'll be back a year. So. Okay. <clears throat> Are there any, can I, yes. excuse, Mr. Chairman, could I ask through you, are there any contracts here that are more than a year? Multi contracts, multi year contracts. Because we seem to see a, a huge um, increase on the maintenance side because of contracts. And um, I, I, will, I wanted to ask you, I did want to ask you in the uh, town meeting forum, by but I wanted to ask you. Were those multiple year contracts for the maintenance department that bought them? Yeah, the easiest, easiest way, if you actually if you can pull out one of the handouts, you'll see it just broken down to Article 1, Article 4. Okay. Everybody that had agreed, and then including the arbitration, it was 4% based off of a multi year. So you can see the breakdown on that. Some of them were one and a half for one year, another half at mm -hmm. mid year. Okay. So at that point, you've received a 4%. Mm -hmm. uh, municipal maintenance did have other contractual obligations mm -hmm. that were put in there that no. uh, increased it, so it was multi-year. And, and one other question, if the chair would bear with me, were any of these contracts negotiated, so no contracts have been negotiated in the last month, month and a half? The last one that, that we had had that went through was the uh, was Article Four, the library mm -hmm. okay. union. So that's uh, and the the other ones that everybody's up through June thirtieth, two thousand eleven, except for the steel workers. There's two levels of that. There's a um, piece of who falls into the steel workers? Uh, the it would be the some of the directors, department directors. Okay. Uh, Myself, I'm, I'm one of them. Oh, okay. Uh, such, uh, I made it sound bad by saying one of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Lee. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chair, I'm going to motion for favorable action with articles 5 through 15. So moved. Second. 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 McDonald, discussion. Mr. Uh, question. I see. Uh, we're talking five to fifteen, not four. Five to fifteen. Uh, I see that the board of selectmen have abstained. At this point, we have no information on what will happen with any of these contracts. So I can understand why they abstain. It just we abstain until we get we could, information. Yes. Um. Uh, this point. is just. I'm sorry. Yes, no. No. Um. Sorry. This is just like we did before. In other words, we have to take a sum of money and put it in the kitty to hold in the event that these are actually negotiated. That's Am already, I correct? That's already in the budget was done. We did that. Just in the place hold the closures in case something settles so that we paid that year. So I don't understand what we're doing here then. How are we just going to say it? Madam Moderator, would you like to answer the question? You're not paying attention to us. Madam Moderator. Our, our question is why we have three mutual placeholders. Because if this is a fiscal year 12, I believe, so it would have to come out of the current budget, which is why it's a special town meeting. So hopefully between now and May 21st, these contracts will be settled and then, then they can be paid out of the current budget. And it would come out of the... You're right, we you already know, have enough. So right, exactly. Come out of that. I'm just wondering what sort of action we're taking. I mean, uh, she just said if they are settled by May 21st. Oh, do you mean to I get the two more hours. <laughs> if they were settled by May 21st, we would vote on them on May 21st. Okay. Right now, we have no information on the contract. I see. I, I know this is confusing. You're, if you vote favorable tonight, you're voting for something you have no idea. Right. Okay. If you vote no, you're voting something you have no idea. Right. But we can abstain the new call meeting before the 21st meeting. Okay. We need to reconsider. I that. thought we were, we were just, I thought we were putting the money in the kitty. That's all we were voting for. But you're saying that there are. It's already in the kitty. 
They, they are under current negotiations and may settle by the end of the They may settle by the end of the year. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's not forget, too, the special town meeting is for the fiscal year 2012, not 2013. Okay. It's separate from what we just finished. Oh, this is 2012. 2012. 2012. I see. 2012. I see. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Aye. Uh, 006. Article number one is the state of town vote to confirm the award made by the JLMC concerning the police union contract and or take any other action relative there to. Third. Do I have a motion for favorable action? I'll just favorable action. Second. 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 Discussion? Second. Are there dollar figures going to be in the warrant? There will be. We actually just received one of them uh, now, and that's for, for Article 1. It looks like approximately to bring it through to the week of uh, the special town meeting. So after that, we they will just they'll go into payroll at that time okay. so we're looking at uh, approximately two hundred and ten thousand. it looks like it'll be a, a little bit less than that but uh, let's do two hundred and ten thousand on that just in case there's maybe there's somebody's shift differential we didn't think correctly so i'd rather not ask for anything else do we put that much money aside there's uh there's the issue we that has to come out of free cash okay. How much is, do we have in here? Uh, about 306,000. I'm sorry, it doesn't reach here. Um, so excuse me, three what? 306. 306. And, and what was the amount for this that you're holding aside? 210,000 is what we'll request. Excuse me, um, Well, that brings two questions up there, if I may. One, um, is this just for FY12 or, is it, or the 210, does that include prior years before FY12? It includes prior years. Okay. Will take us up to date? It's five years worth. That takes them all the way back five years ago. Well, that, that no, certainly helps me make feel better when you talk about five years. Um, the other mm -hmm. question I have is, will all of these other articles affect the free cash also? No. So the only other one that we, we would have monetarily is Article 5, which is the library. And uh, uh, Finella. Library looks like four. Four, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Library number four. And that's, we're, we're skipping ahead a little bit. That's going to be approximately 50, 5,500, 5,600 there. There's only two unions in that employee, in that, two employees in that union. Thank you very much. And this again, as to Clara, this is coming out of FY12? Yes. Okay. And just if I may, Mr. Chairman, um, we have in fact included the arbitration decision, which goes all the way back to 2007. So, Sullivan, could you recap that for us? <clears throat> If you go through the, uh, you have the arbitration agreement in front of you, the first position you'll see, it's going to break it down as to the history of it, what they've agreed on, and the, uh, what the wages were that were proposed by the town, what was proposed by the union, and then actually gives both positions. So you'll see where, what, what we used as a basis for what, what should be awarded on there, what the union felt was the basis. And then um, they're numbered on page eight, you'll see the actual award. Mm -hmm. Now it gives a percentage. They, they obviously wouldn't give a monetary amount because they, they wouldn't know what, what people have earned and such. Mm -hmm. So the next part on there is the sick leave buyback, which for the police was in FY12, approximately 53,000. So my understanding is that that's now going down to from 100% to 75%. Uh, you can take that and realize that we'll probably gain about $13,000 and that we won't have to pay that 
as much. So there's some savings there. Uh, the next section on there would just be the, is the that's page 10, is the actual award showing 100%, 75% sick leave buyback, and that they will allow, that they award bi-weekly pay. And the only other part in here is, it should list, I believe, yeah, it looks like one of the pages got, page 7 did not come through. Neither did page 11. Well, that, yeah. I can tell you exactly what happened then. It's double-sided, and I press one side, it's double-sided. So oh. I'll make new copies of this tonight and come back to that later. But the only other thing that we have would be on, yeah, you see the breakout on page four. The, they also agreed to the same code <coughs> as all the other unions on there, which actually would be, you've got the, the library one in there, so the breakdown is the same as that. Yeah, page two of the library agreement, you'll see the insurances. Those co-pays are the same, but I will get a copy to the to the finance committee. To the police department. How do they feel about these increases? How did the police department yeah, feel? About these increases. The union body? Yes. Well, I, mean, I can't speak for each individual number, and I don't think it would be appropriate based on the arbitration decision to talk about that. You'd have to ask uh, the union leadership. Mayor, Mr. Chairman, we do, I, I, I feel that, you know, I, I think that the average patrolman's paid longer anyway. So, I mean, this is, to me, it looks like they're settling for a, a lot less than I would be. You know? It's an arbitration award. Oh, okay. You know. And just so you know, um, I can't comment on this. Mr. Andrews was, in fact, making certain offers mm -hmm. to the union. And, um, and uh, yeah. Because I think they came up, I think they came up short. Uh, but it is an arbitration award. I also know some of the insurances were doing the same thing in our previous contracts we saw. There is a copay, but the copay is reimbursable provided by prompt proof of payment. Correct. We, we actually have a rough estimate of what our savings are going to be through the unions on that, uh, from the from our health insurance advisors, and that's approximately one hundred and thirty thousand dollars a year. So we've had some good savings on the increased copays. Now the years that are shown on this are these are these calendar years or physical years? Twenty one, two thousand, two thousand eight. It, they would go through the fiscal years, but doesn't. If you look at that, also on there, um, some of the payments wouldn't be just pure fiscal years because some would happen midway. You would have one at the uh, June 30, June 30th or July 1st, and then you'd have one midway through December on there. So what we're basically saying is, from July 1st, 2007 to June 30th, 2008, there was no pay increase. Correct. From July 1st, 2008 to June 30th. 2009, there was no pay increase. Mm -hmm. From the July 1st, 2009 to June 30th of 2010, there was 1.5%. Right. And then from July 1st, 2010 to December 31st, a half a percent. Yes. And then from January 1st, 2010 to June 30th, 2011, 2%. Correct. I don't want to get that into the record and also make it available. If we're talking about a document that we can see and we can't hear it. And basically, they took four years of no pay increase, or three years of no pay increase. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? Fair would entertain motion for favor. Oh, where are we? have the motion for favor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Six of those now. Article three, so uh, try to help you. Mm -hmm. uh, not spend too much time here. Article three, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate transfer or borrow a sufficient sum of money to purchase a 2012 Dodge Ram pickup for the listed price of twenty-four four. I'm sorry, twenty-four thousand four hundred dollars with an additional four thousand five hundred. 
be added for a police radio, emergency lights, and police markings. Minus 9,000 received from the insurance settlement regarding the previous truck, which was deemed a total loss after being involved in an accident. The total price of the truck would be $9,900. 19,900. I'm tired of last night. I had a motion for favorable action. Motion for favorable action. Second. Discussion? Chief, would you explain it? Yes, uh, Donald Lake was in, in our existing truck when we had, which was uh, 12 years old, I believe, and was, uh, was driving when a man had a seizure and uh, actually it was lucky he hit Donald and not another car because Donald had a sizable pickup truck and hit the truck and um, crossed over the center line and we tried to get the truck fixed through the total loss everything was rotted out on it and so forth again it was like 11 to 12 years old um, and uh, we went to the insurance company and they originally offered us eight we got it up to nine we couldn't get any more so we have nine thousand dollars for it the problem is we need it desperately for a thousand issues. We are moving trailers with barricades, ATVs, um, back and forth with all the different events that take place uh, throughout the town. We need to pick large bulk items up and throw them in the back. It gets a lot of use, not on general patrol. It lasts a long time. Again, the last one, the last one was a long time. So we need to move forward on it, and I can't really wait because we've got some are right upon us and we need to move pretty rapidly on this. It's, it's an emergency appropriation as far as I'm concerned. Um, I guess this town, the way they have it set up is a little different than what I'm used to. There was a fund back in my old job where we were able to go in if we lost something and get the, <coughs> get the cost difference and just move forward. Um, in this case, a little bit different. We don't have that available. Mr. Trudeau. Thank you. Uh, to you, to the chief. Um, this vehicle, half ton, three quarter, one ton, um, four wheel drive? Um, yeah, it's a four wheel drive, police rated, crew cab, four door, used for multiple things. Um, half ton, one ton? I don't know, it's what they, it's what the police, it's, it's, I'm not a truck guy, it's what they recommend, it's a sizable truck, it's got the same engine as the cruisers have, it's pursuit rated, it's, um, oh, I, actually I can tell you. There you go. <laughs> I can tell you how big it is. I thought it was probably a one ton. Yeah. It is a 1500 crew cab. Does that help? 1500? It's a Dodge, right? Yeah. 4x4, four 5x7 four, in box, 5.7 V8 engine, 5 year, 100,000 mile warranty. DVD? <laughs> no. Doesn't say how many tons it is. A 1500, so it's a half ton. If it was a 2500, it would be a one ton. Half ton. Yeah, so it's a thousand pound on the bed. Mm. Just wanted to know if the chief knew. But when you talk about carry capacity on this vehicle, you know, would you talk a thousand pounds versus talking? Yeah, and it's just tows, it tows all of our trailers and stuff. And cool. That's all it needs. Through to the chief. Chief, on the old truck, seems like you guys did pretty good getting nine grand. Um, was was the radio or the lights or anything? Um, was that was that any of that salvageable? Or I when, a, you, when you do the loss, you got to give it all up. No, you don't have to give it all up. Um, the only request I had for the equipment that was in the truck was from the Smithsonian. Oh, they were recycled for that truck. Let me tell you. <laughs> Just ask it without a problem. Yeah. Um, when you say it's an emergency, um, you can wait till the town meeting. That's something that you're prepared for, or is that uh, something you're trying to pull off quicker, or is it? They can't. They can't. Capital item. Yeah. Capital item. Even yeah. on a lease. This isn't a lease, right? No, I said, that's a funding. No, I, 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 I said that. We, I was just thinking of, you know, if there was a way to speed it up with a lease. I mean, you have $9,000. You don't get a week. What's yeah, that? You don't get a week, it's a time meeting. A week? Two weeks. 
Two weeks, I'm sorry, two weeks. Two, three, 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 two,
there are some financial considerations here because we have other issues out there that maybe that free cash can help. So that's something you know we obviously got leave up to the uh, the brain trust over at uh, town hall. But we need to you know our I guess up from our stand my standpoint what we're trying to do is decide you know as a finance committee whether or not to approve it. Well, I guess I, I have a question. Am I voting for twenty eight thousand nine hundred or am I voting for nineteen? That's a good question. Nineteen nine. That's what we're voting for. Well, you're well, saying no, he's going to finance the full amount, which is twenty eight nine. So it brings me back to the question: What am I voting for? What's printed in one? <laughs> what is printed in the one? The motion is twenty four four and four five. So you're voting. Twenty-eight thousand. No, minus the insurance. The total, the total amount of the article is nineteen nine. It says the total amount of the article. Mr. Solomon, where is the nine thousand? Can I have a question? Excuse me. It says the nine thousand have to go through the general fund as an insurance reimbursement. The nine thousand we've already received. It's in the the insurance account that we receive. So we could, if we voted upon as this is voted, we could pull that money out. Right away, I, I do understand the, the dilemma of the committee. It's the way we're we're thinking about this um, because it is. Are we voting for twenty eight nine, and then nine will come out of the insurance? Well, it would be the total cost of the truck would be twenty eight thousand nine hundred. So that is we that pulled. the amount that the town will be asked to appropriate for the truck? We already have nine thousand appropriated for it. Well, it's raised, it's right. 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 right? Right. Right. So, so we're looking for authorization for 28.9, and then I can automatically fall to it, correct? So we don't, we'd have to be the 19.9 since we already, that's the additional monies that we'd be looking. Is the nine authorized to be spent on the truck? That's my question. Is it authorized to be spent on the truck? I don't think it is. Well, Theoretically, I don't want to get into an accounting house. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I don't Why, either. Yeah. But theoretically, that the reimbursement was for the old truck, and this because it is a replacement truck. I think mm -hmm. you have so to you take the general fund. No, I, you're right. I mean, I don't know. If there's any way around. It. I guess that's where I'm going to the and the overall is we're probably looking at this article right, being. Let's, let's go for the simple solution here. If we go for the twenty-eight nine, Chief brought up a very valid point, and there was some hesitation because we didn't have authorization to get a new vehicle without town meeting approval. This was an unanticipated event. Article 2 will move back some $55,000 from the, a loan that we made for you know, to the town, for the town account, to the Finance Committee Reserve Fund. We have to take it out of the reserve fund because it's an unanticipated event. So we will keep fit the definition. What's the Let the insurance go through the general fund. We take twenty. We would take the twenty-eight nine from the reserve fund. Purchase the vehicle. Well, then. Do you think the one else What's the total amount once the fifty-five goes back into the reserve? What's the total? Is that seventy? Some eighty thousand dollars. Yeah, seventy-nine, right. something like that. See, my problem is I don't think we've spent twenty-eight thousand dollars out of the reserve fund because. Well, but then again, we still have to. Unanticipated. 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 That's right. I didn't think about that. The problem that we had was it was a new vehicle, mm -hmm. which has to be authorized by the county, according to charter. Mm -hmm. It's authorized, <coughs> and then you can just take the county by making a request to the FinCom. Okay, so the request to the FinCom comes after the special time. Yes. Okay. That was a matter of financing. Would that satisfy everybody? I think it's a great idea. It makes it easy to count too because nine thousand goes back to the general fund for the insurance reimbursement, correct? Yes. It fly straight. That's a, does it go fly straight to the uh, free cash then? We go to free cash. Yes. So, so we effectively take nine thousand dollars extra out of ours, and it goes into free cash. Ours will go to free cash anyways when it gets to the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Quick then, um, go through the, the process then. So. The article then has to be amended, correct? No. We don't need to raise an appropriate. It would be trip. The, there's three, excuse me, three years, Mr. Chair. There's, there's several options there, so we would basically choose the transfer. Yeah, right the, up there at the top. Mm -hmm. So this is okay the way it's written? Yeah, then we, the motion would be to transfer. Is that, is that my? I'm sorry, no, sorry. you don't need a motion in town meeting. All you need to do is to raise an appropriate to 24-4 and the 4,500, period. 
That's okay. all. Okay. okay. That's all you have to do with this motion. Okay. I understand. That. Okay. All right. Then, as this motion passes, you just need to come to us at the next meeting and request a transfer to fund it. Oh, and then I yeah. get the vehicle right away. Exactly. And you, and you get the vehicle right, right away. away. That's the way to go then. You're perfect. Huh? That's the way to go. I was like, that doesn't tie you up at all. I, you're spoiling them. <laughs> I'm not spoiling them. Maybe at least it doesn't. They beat me up already. We've already aggravated them with the fact that our town charter says it's a new vehicle. It has to go back to the permission. All right? And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to soothe them a little bit. And that was a difficult <laughs> learning experience here in William. Well, <laughs> you're, very, you're a very good student. They're towing your car now. They're towing my car now. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to have to get back on the radio right now. <laughs> Okay. So, so we're looking for well, as far as the article goes, then we vote. We're that, voting for 28 now. But we're amending it to say. We're going to amend it to take out the last sentence. Mm -hmm. So minus the last sentence. Take out the, la the insurance settlement and the total article amount. Okay, so, so the, motion will read, the motion will read to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate transfer or borrow a sufficient sum of money to purchase a 2012 Dodge Ram pickup for the listed price of 24400 with an additional 4500 to be added for police radio, emergency lights, and police markings. Okay. Period. Period. And then... Yes. You have a motion on the floor right now. I would ask that the motion be withdrawn. Previous motion will be withdrawn. Who made the motion? Seconded it. I seconded it. I'll withdraw. Uh, I'll withdraw the motion. Previous motion is withdrawn. So we need a new motion. I need a new motion. I'll move favorable action on Article 3 as amended. As amended. Second. Any discussion? I think we just discussed it my, today. My, my, only, just, my only discussion is, 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 is this work with the, uh, the moderator. Is, is this going to be written up? Like, because I, I'm reading her face and I'm not sure what I'm reading. We just need a new moderator. She's right behind. She's right behind. The motions haven't been written yet, so the motions can be written okay. appropriately. Okay. They, haven't, they haven't been done yet. Right. Okay. So we'll just introduce the motion at that point. Okay. Any further questions? I, I just have one. When, once we bring this up at, at the special town meeting, should someone actually speak on that we uh, did receive 9000 Let's go into you know should, should, should the general public know that to maybe yes. help soothe the issue? I'll just let it go. Don't say nothing. What's, what's the soothe? No, you know, I think it will. I don't think it will soothe. I think it will confuse. Okay. Thanks. All right. But that's all I want to know. Do we receive anything for it? Yes. Yeah, so the insurance company wants to finish on. Done. I, I disagree. I, okay. I, I think you should tell people that that you got the $9,000 and you should. Well, hopefully they'll have been watching the next meeting. Pardon? Hopefully they will have watched the this meeting. Yeah. The coming Sunday might have had that stylized. So Wait. Oh, yeah, everybody's home watching this. Okay, it looks like it's a problem. We could always bring it up, but I don't want to put it out there as special emphasis. All right. Okay. All right. I don't think and if they need an explanation, Mr. Chairman, I can explain what they have. Yeah, so if somebody raises it, I'm sure the chief will rise to speak to it. Okay. Mr. Sullivan will clear up the financial end there. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. The six zeros are out. Just please don't forget to transfer when, when it passes. I'm going to say when well, it passes. Like we are all alone. <laughs> I will not forget that. We might not be able to get a quorum right back. All right. Let's go back to Article 2. Thank you. Article two is basically what the, these are all these are the correct me wrong, all of these are the same transfers that were in the original one for two thousand thirteen. Correct. However, I've, I've provided an update on there, which is realistically what we should do is sometimes by trying to get the information out, we can we can almost shoot ourselves in the foot a little bit. Mostly in, in other towns when they're doing the transfers and the actual warrant, they're not listing them out there because when, when you're putting it together, you know, you're, you're going to the year end, you may have some bills that's been sitting on somebody's desk that they'll surprise you with. Uh, so.
going into the future, we will not see probably the whole transfers listed on there. Uh, obviously, I'll bring that information along, but that's that's something that's a that's a bit of a learning experience where we're trying not to trying to get as much information, but without sort of handcuffing ourselves. Uh, we do. If you see the handout there, there's going to be we're going to request two changes and. It, what I believe really doesn't matter at the end of the day. I don't believe it changes the scope of the article, but it will be up to, uh, I'm going to throw somebody under the bus there, you know, they're in there, Madam Moderator on there. Uh, and this is the information that I want to bring in front of you. Uh, if, it, if it's not allowed, we'd vote on Article 2, which would have to be amended because that municipal maintenance transfer is no longer needed. They're going to get the the uh, FEMA reimbursements approximately. I believe they'll receive approximately two hundred twenty-five thousand. Okay. And what was the other change? The other change. Well, there that or other I, changes. Other changes. So if you go down to that same line on the handout of D, there's work and workers' compensation. I I, I don't see that on the D. Oh, on this one, it's right there. The You'll see, uh, there, see that there's a long-term debt and interest in the other column, column the, um, the right hand column says workers' compensation. Uh, there's, we, we actually underfunded it this year for what our workers' compensation costs are. However, there's a, there's a, a long-standing workers' compensation award that's paid out that I guess I understand this year, it's the first year it's being paid out of that budget line item, so it's, it's kind of come as a shock to me. Uh, it's going to be 33,404 more than what we've budgeted. Uh, I'll probably clean that up to about 33,500 for, for round numbers on there, but I was just thinking of this. So, Realistically, that's one of the ones that I would need to do because I can't do it as a year-end transfer. It's, it's over the limits. So that's one I'd like to get put in here. Uh, we were taking 62000 out of there, out of uh, the long-term debt and interest before. This is uh, now 33404 Okay, then you're also adding K. Yes, K is the long-term debt and interest putting $10,000 into the audit account. We received a, uh, we were all set for a mid-year audit that we had, which came through. Uh, we're, we're you know, not going to spill any beans by saying it. it's looked a, a heck of a lot better than it has in, in the past there, but we'll wait for the actual results. However, the GASP 45 valuation <laughs> where's where's <Dick> Wilson? <laughs> There was a um, a former town accountant had ordered a Gatsby forty five actuarial valuation. Uh, I believe it was something that we did need to do. However, that is something that this year had been sitting on a desk and in basically a person who's no longer here email account that's where they were sending all the information to and they finally got around to uh, Derek Sullivan who realized we have uh, it was ninety five hundred dollars was the cost of it mm. <laughs> what about the results that's kind of an interesting story. I am sure I will be making proper copies of results to everybody both sides just on give here. What you're we don't know <laughs> <laughs> Schedule for a future meeting. Okay, All right. All right. Uh, I'll give you charge tonight. So basically, what you pass out for you say would be your amended motion. Correct. That's what, this is what we would uh, we be looking for on this. Um, it's, on on the good side, it's a it's approximately nineteen thousand less than what was requested in the original warrant. On the bad side, we're we're still paying some bills. You're saying it's increased? No, it's decreased by yeah, it's gone down. Okay. That's in comparison to the original one, which we voted favorably on.
directly into the other person that's told. Um, Chair, we have any motion for a favorable action as amended? I don't have a motion on the floor, right? So moved by Mr. McDonald. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Six here. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. The Super Town will vote to raise the appropriate and transfer some of the money from the available funds to fund the collective bargaining agreement between the town and the AFSCME Council 93, AFL CIO, the local 30 Wareham Library employees to do their acting amendment. Any matter relative to their treatment. Mr. Salzer, you would recap that? Would you just a recap out there? The Article 4 is the, the agreement between the town and the, the librarian union. Uh, if, you, if you look at the, you're going to have two handouts, one that showed Article 1 and Article 4. This handout <coughs> just gave a uh, quick summary of it. Uh, they, they had a similar agreement as we saw for the police there. Uh, their cost for this agreement to, to the town would be $5,333.42 for the week ending May 19th. What was it now? $5,333.42. This is also an arbitration. This was not. Uh, this was not an arbitration. This okay. was actually a, an agreed upon. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. I believe at the at the end of all the agreements, everybody pretty much received the similar. Some would have received that it was four percent. I'm sure some had a slightly higher aggregate amount if one received their their percentage at the beginning of the year versus mm -hmm. mid year. But that that's roughly what everybody had received. All these built in. These amounts are not so much these amounts, but when we look at the 2013, everything is in that budget. Yes, that's uh, that's why we see the increases that we see. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I just noted that they only spent about 65, so they agreed to 25 percent. They have lowered theirs uh, because this wasn't. This is actually an agreement. It wasn't an arbitration. This is, uh, and as we all, I think what what we've heard over the past two years is that that is an ultimate goal to, to remove the sick leave buyback mm -hmm. uh, and save the town some money. So okay. we budgeted at FY thirteen for a slightly less amount, and hopefully we'll continue having that lowered each each year till we don't have that burden on the community anymore. So the police department is now a bi weekly payback? Mm -hmm. No, they're all they're all weekly. If everybody is a bi weekly bi weekly request. Correct. That was denied under the police arbitration. No, they uh, it's if every union agrees to it, the right. bi weekly pay then gets enacted. Oh okay. um, there's still the two steel workers um, out there that they're you know, I think it's being negotiated. Okay, so that's not happening to you. Any other questions on this? Again, so everyone knows, for the fiscal years 2007 to 2008, no increase to the 8th. To 2009, no increase. As of July 1st, 2010, 1.5%. As of December 31st, 2010, 0.5%. And as of June 30th, 2000. This contract runs through June 30, 2011, so I take it we still have to negotiate the 12 going forward, correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, should you probably say aye. 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 Opposed? Extension? Motion we'll passes the third block to six days ago. Yeah, 
Article 16 to see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen and or Town Roadway Commissioners as applicable to accept a gift by Dean or Easement of approximately 8,000 square foot right of way of a certain property located at 4 Seth F. Road, Seth F. Kobe Road, and 2419 Cranberry Highway, currently owned by Bayside Agricultural Inc., subject to the limitation that the right of way be used only for roadway purposes and only in connection with proposed improvements in Toby Road and Cranberry Highway as are approved by the Planning Board and Zoning Board of Appeals for to do or act in any manner relative thereto. Have a motion for favorable action? Sure. Second? Second. for a second. Do we have anybody here to speak to the article? My understanding is this is part of the situation of Walmart. 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 All right. That this land is being conveyed to the town to straighten the road. I believe they needed the. the they would either need an increase in the road or uh, straighten it out to make sure that it reflects on what the needed traffic patterns are. So the town is being asked to accept the gift. Madam Myrie, yeah, I, 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 I think I understand that um, you have, as you come out Toby Road, you come to the intersection, it's sort of off center. And what's happening is the big trucks from Cape Cod Express, um, they're not able to make that swing if the traffic is at the traffic lights. Mm -hmm. So, I, my understanding is they want to try to make an alignment. Like if you're coming down Cranberry Highway from West Wayham and you want to make a left turn into the bank, you actually have to go through the la the light, but the traffic has already started coming this way. So that will sort of even out and align the intersection so that it will be more traffic friendly. Okay. This is basically my understanding of what was happening as well. And this, Mr. Chintria, um, this is being <coughs> a gift uh, to the town. I'm always suspicious of gifts. I have a question too. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually been straightened out the traffic problem is what it is, all right? And actually the road paving, et cetera, I believe, will be done by Walmart. All right, as part of the mitigation or by the I, I don't know what the agreement is. We're not is paying for the gift. Oh, okay. I, I can't say that tonight. Yes, I'm I, 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 I'm I'm the incident by Howard Robinson. That's the owner of the property. The but is this the same Mr. Robinson who wants to jump? Okay, okay. This guy never gave away a, a dime in his life. That's all I'm telling you. That's my opinion. <laughs> okay, this guy didn't give nothing for nothing. But I'll leave it alone. For him to do it. I'll leave it alone. <laughs> okay, that's Mr. Robinson. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. Any other conversations? Oh, Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Aye. 501. Article 17. To determine whether the town will vote to add a registered voter requirement of one year for elected officers or to do or act in any manner relative thereto. Motion for favorable action. Motion for favorable action. Second. 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 Discussion? Um, this is, um, I mean, I agree with the, the thought process here. Uh, my thing with this is not so much whether or not you're registered to vote as it is a residency thing for me. It's, it's a, uh, you know, anybody can come into our town and register to vote if they can find an address that allows them to do that. But I think there's, and I'm not sure how you establish residency. I mean, these are obviously legal issues, not so much something that we're going to take up. But I, the concept here, and of course, being the man from the South that came up here, I'm not quite the carpet bagger, but uh, the theory is that you want people to actually live here. Uh, and be part of the town before they can be an elected officer of this town. So I understand the concept, but I'm not sure, is this enough or is this, I, I'm, I don't know. I, well, we all know why this is. Well, whether or not yeah. we know why. Uh, uh, 
whether or not we know why, the issue here is, is this going to address the issue or is this not addressing the issue? If you register to vote and you still don't live here, but you use another address, a, a town address, it's no different then you know you're not you're not accomplishing anything sure. but if you have an actual physical residency requirement i'm not sure legally how to prove that i'm not a lawyer the residency requirement is, is the, well residency is defined by the state of massachusetts mm -hmm. not by the town of where I am. and it's very vague for the state because i pulled yes, it yes it's very it's very vague, very vague so okay. and the reason why it's vague for the state is because back to the military mm -hmm. right. right national guard and also congressional rep uh, congressional staff from the state that lives in Washington during the term of the congressman or senator. That's right. So that's why it, you know, basically anybody can declare the residency to be, uh, you know, well, any way they want. I'm gonna support. Any way they want it to be. Okay. I also know that military members can declare residency in other states just by saying I'm a resident of the state. They don't even have to have a house or anything that they're living in. Just by the very fact that they're stationed there, they can I'm going to support right. this from my standpoint, just because I, I think it's a step in the right direction, but I don't think it's actually the end all to what well, we so need you to do. Go under the law. Okay. Well, so the okay. Well, in that case, you know, I am going to support it. We can't require a voter, but we can't define residency. Yeah, I just I feel like we went through this with the other town meeting that we had. Charter review. Um, the, I mean, several versions of this very statement of um, uh, you know resident for one year, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I thought that you know I feel as though these sort of petition articles continue to try to sidestep charter and charter review, and I, I don't go along with it. Yeah, comments? I, I, I see where you're coming from, um, Bonnie, but I, I really believe it's a step in the, in the right direction. And um, is it the end all? No, but um, any other comments? I, I'll keep mine myself. When I was a child about a year and a half ago, uh, I took it upon myself to attend a couple of charter review meetings and I also maybe pinned a few letters to the newspaper asking for their resignation at the time. Uh, what happened was, <laughs> uh, this is the dog eat my homework, I don't know, that this, the issue I have is not, it, it, when you take something, this is simple, this is one line. By the time the Charter Review took this and made it into a 37-line, two-and-a-half paragraph article, you lose sight of what they were trying to accomplish. And it was also in the midst of articles that were not really addressing our charter, but addressing other issues. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't have disagreed if they had put a one-line <laughs> article out here like this. However, they decided to dress it up to the point where it was a little bit confusing. This is there's nothing real confusing about this statement. What what makes it difficult for me is that I don't think it's the answer. But yes, I, I agree with what you're saying. When you said charter review, I immediately said nay. So no matter what. And that was not fair to them, but at the same time they buried it in a lot of stuff that they didn't need to. Can I ask a question? Shh. Yeah, in response yeah. to that? Yeah. Um, Are you asking me? Well I'm asking for general information. Um, maybe even the Madam Moderator might know the answer to this. Um, this is going to be a piece of legislation that's in the town of Wickham. Well, where does it fit? Does it become part of a bylaw? Does it become a part of the amendment charter. to the charter? The it doesn't charter. say it's a Let's charter change. Yeah. What is it? No, don't say that. Madam Moderator, did you answer that question? I, I can't. I haven't. Actually, I have not researched it. It's on my agenda for this week. Okay. Maybe with town council. I, I, that, that would I, I be believe it. it I believe it falls in the charter change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I believe it's just what they would determine to be a minor charter change. This is where I miss Alan yeah, Slater. The, as the actual motion you could also direct it to as to where the actual correction needs to be made. Uh, okay, I, mean, that I would could be, be curious to the answer to that. Thank you. But you're right. I think it is a charter. I think it needs to have some. Mr. Trudeau. I 
I look at this article and I see Washington, D.C. I see Boston in action where the legislature knows what the poor people in the trenches don't understand. When someone runs for office in this town, we are immediately gutted and play for practice. And one of them is how long you've been a registered voter, how long you've been a resident, do I challenge your residency? I say that I don't see the benefit of this because I believe that during the political process where someone is running for office or someone is seeking appointment to office, the question of how long have you been a registered voter and how long have you been a resident of this town are brought out. And therefore, I don't see that. I think it's up to the electorate or to the appointing authorities for boards to make those decisions. And I don't think that we should be making those kind of decisions for community. Well, this is not for boards or committees, this is for elected officers. Mm -hmm. we understand it's that. The same, same, I understand that, but it's the same result to me, Frank. Well, we okay. just, I just want to make sure that we're clear on that. This is Brown. I, I um, kind of disagree with you, Dave, for a reason. I think, and I just wanted to point out a fact, you know, what I, I feel of that. I think in the long term, um, you can't try and it, it's it's they're making it difficult to try to manipulate an election. I, there's no other way to say it. There's no way other than to say it. You must be a voter in the town of Wareham. You can't just just say well, you can't come in and register to vote just before two months before. Uh, an election without being a registered voter, okay? And it's it, it's going to it's going to discourage people from trying to you solicit people and 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 do something. So, all you do is all you all you do is adding longevity to deception. Sorry, that's how I look but at you know, it. Are you going to deceive someone in two months? You know, or are you going to play a little longer you know, to deceive them? That's, you, all, you you that's all you have. To, I'm no, sorry. Gonna, that's how I look at it. You're not going to plan. You're not going to. You're not going to plan. The likelihood of planning a year ahead, I think, is a, a little bit less. I, I really do. I think. I think. Mr. Chairman. Desperate people protest desperately. I see we're losing one of our committee members. I hear it. Could we, I was just in shock over, over this beautiful thing. I know, I saw that one. <laughs> <laughs> Can I make one more statement, just a quick one? Yes, you may. As my, as my esteemed colleague said to me the other night, you won't mind if I disagree with you. But I just think that we have, we have to... I mean, you're right, deception is deception. But let's face it, it's a little harder to deceive for a year than it is for a month. That's my so, point. So, you know, if you're going, and I'm not interested in the games either. Look, like I, I think that the electorate spoke when they spoke and they had something to say, but this is a little bit more, it's not that strenuous to where you're taking a blood test and, and an FBI report on you. We're talking about a, a requirement of being a registered voter for a year. So it's not a real complicated thing. Mm. It's not hard. And, and you know, I know there's people that think they can come here to save the town, but uh, you need to know the town before you can save the town. So this is not a bad, this is not a, an evil article in my opinion. And I, I give it a chance. I don't want to vote fireball. <laughs> well, my opinion on the The charter was written in the 1970s. And even the state law went to the state law. I think there was a different set of values that were in place at the time. It's, part of the question, this question also came up when somebody moves from an area, when it leaves, then a vacancy occurs. However, the state never defined the word removes. Because they anticipated that the people who left the community would say, okay, I'm leaving the community, I'll resign. In history in this town, we had one who left the community, a selectman, and he resigned. We had another who left the community, all right, and didn't resign. So that's one indication of the change in the values. The other is, is I think the writers of the charter never anticipated that somebody would come in 
and registered a number of weeks before they would suddenly run for, as a candidate for selectman or any other elected officer. The expectation was that people would be looking and saying, I should know a good deal about the town, and that businesses and businessmen would not do this type of thing, etc. And I'm not trying to be pointed on this. I'm just saying there was a different set of values at that time. Those things had changed, all right? And I always, my thing has always been that rules develop for reasons. And there's, you know, you try to avoid the rules, but eventually when the reason occurs, sometimes you have to come back and make some changes because values have changed. And we need new sets of policies and procedures. So I'm so I'm pretty much in favor of this. I think a one-year commitment from anyone before becoming an elected official of the town, I think is very necessary. Mm -hmm. All right, and you know, I'm sorry, I'm also one of these people that loves the residency requirements and all those types of things. I'm a little radical on that. <laughs> the longer you know, community and the harder that you, the more attached you are to the community, the better that you'll be prepared to govern it. Now, just because I, I can. Yes. What a novel idea here. Listen, listen um, we're a finance committee, and this is, seems to me to be a political article. This has political connotations or political overtones. So wouldn't it be in our best interest as a committee, obviously we all have personal opinions, but as a committee to abstain because it really doesn't have any financial impact on this town. It has major financial impact on this town because they are responsible for licensing, they're responsible for the school budget, they're responsible for the town budget, they're responsible for Currently, a sewer assessor. So, I mean, if you look at the, if you look at the elected positions in this town, they are completely tied into the financial aspects of this town. So, I was just trying to play the devil's advocate. Just, yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Thank, thank you. Nobody uh, else was doing this. It, is so. one, this is one of those strange things. You know, it very point. much impacts the financial sector. Okay. Okay. Very much, and I would say we're even when we finally settle the issue of the sewer users, it's still going to be the same I case. Agree. Right. I told you, you I don't want somebody. You don't want somebody from a business on the outside coming in to run for city commissioner to set the rate for his business, not for the residents. Okay. Any further comments, questions, discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Four two. If you get a vote, we can try to get back. I see anybody with the address of a certain place on Main Street. All right, I think we're right on. Uh, Springtown meeting, anybody? Any comments from anyone you have anything that we need to discuss? No. I just got to catch up. Okay. You just have to catch up? Yeah, that's what I was doing. I don't know what happened. Great really business. What's the email? Uh, we have a vacancy which occurred. Somebody has left the town. I am, as such, she has resigned from her position. Uh, according to the charter, the appointing authority is supposed to appoint a candidate within 30 days. We had four open applications um, that were in the town hall. I contacted each of the, each of the individuals. Uh, I did not suggest to these people personally. I left messages for them. I asked them to get back to me to find out if they were still interested. All right, the only individual who did respond was Mr. Worthy. Why do you pronounce your name wrong, Tom, for some reason? I spell it wrong, but I... You spell it wrong? That sounded a pretty good name. Um, and you have to be here tonight. And I don't know what you'd like to say to address the committee at all. As far as your interest in the committee. Um, well, I, I know we interviewed you previously, but... <laughs> I'm, I'm open to answer any questions. That the uh, I'm certainly uh, uh, my interest in joining is to understand more so that I can, with in, with the, in the lack of information I have, the lack of understanding I have, I would be a critic of how the town is spending its money and the value it's getting for its money. And so before. It, Criticizing, I think I better understand it better, and maybe be in a position to gradually wear away on the rock to uh, be 
reshape it and then so that the taxpayer is getting a better value for uh, the dollar. Any questions? I, well, there are lots of comments. No, I, I'm extremely happy with Mr. Worthy. And I've had the benefit, uh, most of us other than Larry, have had the benefit of interviewing him before. So I have no questions, uh, no uh, reservations. Oh, I don't think Anna's invited to uh, this evening. I contacted them all to see if they were still interested. And like I said, he was the only one who responded to me, he called me back and said, yes, I am interested, the other two not. Yeah, I, I have a comment. Uh, they will still be contacting me for a position. All right. Um, this is that well, I was going to say it's a two year position. This is a two year working. vacancy that would be uh, that I would ask. How does this fill. go? How does this go from here? Uh, it goes to the planning authority and they will make a decision. Well, when would, in other words, when would they meet? That's up to the moderator. Okay. Well, I just want to say I was here during the interview process and, and, I, and, and I thought very highly of uh, Mr. Worthen and our committee, uh, over the last year, I've learned a great deal from the people on this committee. I've learned a lot about uh, my point of views, so not quite as different as other people's, which has been great to know. And at the same time, I've learned a lot of things that I didn't know before I got on here. So uh, I appreciate that. And I think that he would be an excellent fit on this committee uh, with his demeanor and what he wants to do. That's what I wanted to do at the time. As chair, I would like to know the committee's recommendation. Uh, would like to I'd like to make a motion. Uh, I, I just, just wanted to comment. I mean, one I met Mr. Woods, I was highly impressed with his uh, his credentials and his ideas, and he had my vote at that point. I could get what I wanted. Oh, <laughs> oh man! <laughs> well, 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 Enough said. Let's not discuss prior votes. Uh, Mr. Mrs. Chairman. Brock, Mrs. Brock. Uh, no. Yeah. It was a joke. I know. Okay. Hopefully. Dry. It was a joke. That was pretty good. I thought. Actually, actually, Mr. Worthy, you had to. This is because you were interested. You had this. Yeah. The entire, uh, you had our vote. So, Mrs. Brock, we were all set. Okay. That's no, I had to just. Let's not go beyond. I was the chairman, and I had to throw that up. Right. Thank you. Throw a fireball yeah. now. Mr. Fidel, uh, we contacted four people, one showed interest in the other three and have yet to do so. That, in my mind, uh, is an indicator of what I can expect of the other three. Uh, I'm interested in people who to show up, be here, try and gain some knowledge of what's going on, even if the town doesn't listen to what we're going to Now, I will say I did not request anyone to be here tonight. I asked you to contact me as to whether or not they were still interested so I could discuss with them the two-year position because they said it was more different than the three-year position. And we have to refill it within 30 days so I didn't have time to send letters out and all that type of stuff, which we will do within the three-year position. How long ago did you request us to be treated for? It's so over a week. Okay. So we it was a time to contact yes. and, I, I, and some of the individuals I saw at town meeting Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I have the committee's recommendation. Not favorable. Favorable. Do you want to vote or do you want just a recommendation? Um, I think it's just I'm, a recommendation. I'll, I'll take just the recommendation. I'm going to do it that way. Uh, I'm going to hear you say everybody seems to be in agreement. I agree. Well, I've heard what Bonnie had to say. That's all. Yeah, Move the matter of minutes, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can approve the minutes for May 4th. Motion to approve the minutes for May 4th. That may be a challenge. Uh, we'll put a watch on this. I have a challenge. I have a challenge. I have a challenge. Please mark on your calendars today's date. Kelly made a mistake. <laughs> 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 Our next meeting is next week. We're required because of the town uh, special town meeting to have a public hearing. All right, um, and the packets are not used to the scene. We did publish a notice to the public um, for that 
hearing, public hearing next week. So I would ask that everybody try to be here right away. It should be a very sh short meeting. It will be very short. So if you all know about time. I might not be here. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all there? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Terrible.